Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing on X-rays and their production. See, the picture shows the electromagnetic spectrum where the different electromagnetic radiation are arranged in their order of increasing energy. So here comes our X-rays which are mainly high energy electromagnetic radiations. X-rays were discovered by William Conrad Ronchen in November 8, 1895 when he was working on a discharge tube where he accidentally found fluorescent radiation emitted by unknown rays. He named them X-rays. X-rays have a wavelength ranging from 1 or 2 angstrom units to 0 0.001 angstrom units. Based on the increasing order of their wavelength, X-rays can be divided into hard, medium, soft and X super soft or grains X-rays. So hard X-rays are supposed to be having a short wavelength and hence high penetration whereas super soft or grains X-rays are supposed to be having a long wavelength and hence very less penetration. So now let us have a look at the X-ray machine and its parts. So the X-ray machine comprises of the negatively charged cathode and a positively charged anode enclosed within a glass envelope. So this is a cathode where we have a tungsten filament which is, which is attached to the power supply embedded within a molybdenum focusing cup. So the tungsten filament is usually 2 mm in diameter and 1 cm or less in its length and it is attached to the power supply so that when a high voltage is applied it gets heated up to incandescence producing electrons. So, to focus the electron beam produced by the tungsten filament, we have a parabolic shaped molybdenum focusing cup which focuses the electrons to a narrow beam onto the focal spot. So, that is how the negatively charged cathode is structurally arranged. Now, this is the anode which is positively charged. It consists of mainly the tungsten target which is rectangular shaped embedded onto a copper step. So the tungsten target is the area where the electron beams from the cathode come and strike to produce the X-rays. So the point on the tungsten target where the electron beam comes and strikes, it is called as a focal spot. And the tungsten target is embedded onto the copper stem and that is mainly to transfer the heat generated on the focal spot outside. For, so the role of copper stem is to dissipate the heat generated. Okay. And then the, within the glass envelope, a vacuum is actually maintained that is mainly done to prevent the collision of the fast moving electrons with the air as well as to prevent the burnout damage of the tungsten filament. So the surroundingly you have the glass envelope. Within the glass envelope you have the insulating oil which also act as a layer of heat dissipation. The useful X-ray beam form comes out of the X-ray tube via the tube window. So that comprises the X-ray parts of the X-ray machine. So why tungsten is considered to be the ideal target material? Because it has a very high atomic number and hence the X-rays produced will be of very high quality. It has a very high melting point which helps it to withstand the heat generated at the anode because out of the cathode rays or electron beams striking the tungsten target 99 percentage of it is getting converted into heat. So the high melting point of the tungsten target will prevent damage to the target. It has a very high thermal conductivity and hence it readily dissipates the heat onto the copper step. And a tungsten target also has a low vapor pressure which helps to maintain the vacuum within the tube. Now let us look at the arrangement of the tungsten target in the X-ray machine. See uh, for the image to be of good sharpness we need as small the focal spot size as possible. But if we reduce the focal spot size to bare minimum then there is a chance of damage to the target because of the heat generated right so hence to overcome those barriers the target is usually placed at an angle of 20 degrees to the electron beam so thus it reduces the actual focal spot size of 1 by 3 mm onto 
1 by 1 mm. So the actual focal spot size is 1 by 3 mm and it reduces the actual focal spot size to an effective focal spot size of 1 by 1 mm. So this principle is called as a line focus principle. So now let's move on how the X-rays are produced by the interaction of the electron beam with the tungsten target. So mainly the X-rays are produced by the interaction of electrons from the tungsten filament that is a cathode stream with the tungsten target. So not all the X-rays are of the same energy but we usually get a continuous spectrum of radiation. Okay. Only about 0.2 to 0.8 of the cathode rays are transformed onto X-rays striking the anode target while rest 99% of it is getting converted into heat. So X-rays produced are of two types mainly Bramstrahlung radiation and characteristic radiation. So first let us have a look at the Bramstrahlung or the breaking radiation. So the term Bramson means to break. It is the primary source of radiation from an X-ray tube. So here the X-rays are produced by the interaction of the incident high energy electron with the nucleus of the atom, tungsten atom, wherein it immediately it stops in its path whereas Bramstrahlung photon of maximum energy is released. So this type of interaction is called as direct hit interaction. In near miss interaction the incident high energy electron coming usually just gets deflected in, in its path when it moves towards the nucleus and hence it will be having an altered path whereas a Bramstrahlung photon of short or small energy is usually released. This is how the Bramstrahlung radiation is produced. So now let us look at how the characteristic radiation or the line spectrum is produced. So they contribute only to small fraction of photons in an X-ray beam. They arise from the interaction of the electrons with the individual electrons in the tungsten atom. Mainly the inner orbital electrons are interacted. So the incident high energy photon strikes the inner orbital electron and ejects it. So creating a vacancy. Now the electrons from the higher energy levels subsequently come down to fill up the vacancy releasing energies corresponding to the difference in the energy levels of the orbitals. So that is how the characteristic radiation or the line spectrum is produced. See the graph depicts the that is the maximum number of photons in an X-ray beam is produced as a result of Bremsstrahlung radiation while the characteristic radiation contributes only to very minimal number of X-rays produced. So that completes the X-ray production. Thank you.